Earth is the only planet in our solar system which possesses life. Life grows only in a congenial environment. Life and environment are inseparable and interlinked. All life forms together with the environment in a given area constitute an ecosystem. Every plant, animal and human being is a part and parcel of the ecosystem. Many elements of the environment or ecosystem are utilized by human beings for their survival, comfort and betterment. Some of the useful elements are the gifts of nature and cannot be produced by man. These gifts are known as natural resources. Other components are called as potential resources. Natural vegetation, animal life, land, water and minerals constitute the natural resources of our country. Land as a natural resource. Land is one of the natural resources. Men depend on land to satisfy most of their needs. For instance, it provides for more than 95% of human food requirement, greater part of clothing and housing, and all needs of wood for fuel and construction. The availability of land is limited. Land occupies only 30% of the total area of Earth's surface. The rest is water. Even this 30% is not always habitable. Inhabited parts of land About 90% of the world population, which is over 6 billion, occupies only 30% of the land area. The remaining 70% of the land is either sparsely inhabited or uninhabited. Sparse inhabitation means 10% of the population occupies the land area. The reason is that this land is either too rocky or the climate is too dry, too wet, too hot or too cold. The topography of the land such as rugged and steep slopes of the mountain and low-lying areas which are susceptible to waterlogging and extreme climate impose restrictions on land for human use. Deserts and grasslands of Asia and Africa, tropical forests of South America, Africa and Southeast Asia and polar areas are sparsely populated areas. These areas are inhabited by people whose survival is based on hunting, gathering, herding and growing some crops. Antarctica is uninhabited except for temporary occupation by scientists for research purposes. Fertile plains and river valleys are suitable for agriculture. That is why these areas are densely populated. Land use in India we use land for agriculture, cattle grazing of animals, building houses, roads, mining and manufacturing etc. Land use varies from region to region. India has a total land area of about 328 million hectares. Over the past 8,000 years our forefathers have succeeded in converting nearly 140 million hectares of land from the natural ecosystem to agriculture. Since independence, we have added another 22 million hectares. As a result, today we have 162 million hectares of land for agriculture. It forms a spectacularly high percentage of 51%. Along with this agricultural land, we have 4% of the land available as pasture land. 
21% as forest land and the rest 24% as waste land. Degradation of forests The forest land in our country is far below scientific norms. For a self-contained economy and proper ecological balance and for absorption of carbon dioxide, at least a third of the total land area must be kept under forest and natural vegetation. Degradation of forests has led to a rise in atmospheric temperature at the global level. It may lead to melting of ice caps and a corresponding rise in sea levels, thus endangering low-level, thickly populated parts of the world. Forests provide habitat to wildlife, minimize incidence of drought, conserve water and soil, as well as help in reducing the volume of flood water. Wasteland Land which is not utilized is called wasteland. This includes arid, rocky and sandy deserts. The high mountains and uneven lands also belong to this category. If forests are depleted and grasslands are overgrazed, the land becomes unproductive and eventually wastelands are formed. Judicious use of land with proper planning. The growing population and higher standards of living have created an increasing demand for residential land in villages and cities. Today, Cities and towns are compelled to grow vertically rather than horizontally. Despite this, more land is required for expansion of industries, institutions, transport and recreational facilities. We should keep in mind that the total availability of land is a fixed asset. Therefore, proper planning and judicious use of land is absolutely necessary. Along with this, Suitable measures should be adopted to check soil erosion, desertification, etc. The wasteland should be brought back to other uses. With the help of modern and scientific methods of farming, the productivity of land can also be increased. Land hunger. Because of exploding population, we are required to produce sufficient quantities of food. This is known as land hunger, which is creating a serious pressure on land. Farmland is under threat due to more and more intense utilization. When soil is used more intensively by farmers, it is eroded even more rapidly by wind and rain. Over-irrigation of farmland leads to salination because evaporation of water brings the salts to the surface of the soil because of which crops cannot grow. Indiscriminate use of chemical fertilizers poisons the soil and eventually the land becomes unproductive. Land is also polluted by industrial waste and rural and urban sewage. As the urban sector grows and industrial expansion takes place agricultural land and forests shrink. In this way, land hunger increases. Let the land be renewed. No doubt, land is a precious gift of nature and provides almost all resources for the survival and development of human civilization. If its deterioration is not halted, it will eventually turn into a non-renewable resource. This will create a grave situation which will have long-term adverse effects on human civilization. Hence, a rational use of land is required with careful planning to maintain its existence as a renewable resource.